everybody for tuning in. It's the Hood Paralegal, the official podcast, and it's episode one. It's your boy, Corey Woodland, tuning in. And later on, I'm going to be joined by my partner, my brother, Javon Curtis. You know, this episode, we're going to be talking about fatherhood and black family dysfunction. And I want to start off with a quote. You know, if you don't know who you are, any history will do. First of all, I want to express gratitude to my children, Courtney, Corey, Christopher, and Chloe, and their mother, Miss Lafia Charter, for allowing me the opportunity to experience fatherhood. I deeply consider it a privilege. You now, one thing about fatherhood is force you to view life through a different pair of glasses. And viewing fatherhood through a different lens has allowed me to come to the realization of how misguided my perspective has been. For example, when we justify our actions by saying we did crimes to feed our kids. Now, don't get me wrong, our motives may be sincere, but we are truly victims of this generational trap because the result of our actions are the opposite, and we actually starved them. And we starved them because due to us being locked up, it deprives them of our presence and quality time, which can't be refunded or compensated for and create substantial trauma for them. And then our absence creates, a, creates another trauma because it forces their mothers to assume both roles of the mother and the father, which is not an easy task. And the main reason I salute and cherish the mother of my children, Ms. Lafia, for everything she's been doing, you know, and all the other single mothers out there that's forced to assume both roles while the father is in prison. And seeing things from her perspective has allowed me to develop a deep and profound respect for her and appreciate her strength. And I realized that the collateral damage of my absence has caused substantial trauma and she has to sacrifice certain dreams so our children can pursue theirs and still has managed to accomplish major goals while taking care of four children by herself, which is why I feel the only appropriate title for her is the GOAT. Now, one thing about it, in order to take authority over a problem, we have to first identify it. And disproportionate black family dysfunction is a generational curse directly linked to slavery. And deconstructing this very concept of black family was central to build a new economy and lay the cornerstones of personal fortunes in the Jim Crow era. You know, assessing this form from a marketing perspective, the black family had to be destroyed, and the first order of business was to remove the black family designated protector, which is the black man. Systems were put in place to continue to keep the black man from performing his duties for it to his family after slavery was abolished, such as you got the welfare system, which they offer financial incentives for the father leaving home, and then concentrated poverty was implemented, which is the cause of this current pandemic we call mass incarceration, AKA the school to prison pipeline. You know, poverty is indeed slavery. And a young black man, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, has a one in 21 chance of being murdered as compared to a one in 333 chance for a white man the same age. Black Americans are disproportionately victims of crimes, and as long as there are great disparities in the socioeconomic status of blacks and whites, blacks will continue to be overrepresented in the criminal justice system as victims and offenders. And one in every two black youth live in poverty. Now, the black male prison population is over 50%, whereas our population in this country is only about 6.5%. And the majority of black children under the age of 18 live in families that include their mothers, but not their fathers. The majority of black children live under the age of 18 live in families that include their mothers, but not their fathers. While only one out of every five white children live in a household with their parents. So the solution to that is, you know, black men and black women, we have to become partners. You know, the strongest partnership is a black woman and a black man. You know, one thing about it, the black women, they are the carriers of the culture and the keepers of the flames. So we have to start protecting them, meaning black men, we have a responsibility and we have to hold ourselves accountable to form these relationships and heal these relationships with our women because as you see, the systems and the enemy, we not, are the enemy, we not each other's enemy. You know, we see it's bigger than us. You know, as long as you understand the problem and we identify it, we can find the right solutions. And I feel like the only right solution it is is to heal together. You know, and as you can see, they're not going to stop implementing these systems to remove us from the family and stop us from doing our duty. So, hey, we got to point out the problem. And like I said, 
we got to come together and build these strong partnerships. And like I said, we don't know our history. You know, anyone will do. So i leave y'all with that, and I'm going to tag my partner in, you know, and we just drop the jewels, and we appreciate y'all for tuning in, and we just going to keep it straight to the point and put it like that, you know, even me. And I apologize to any of my sisters, you know, that been harmed by any of our brothers. You know, we want to heal, and we want to correct this problem, and because we see that together we can prosper, okay? And these Jim Crow laws and Willie Lynch agendas, our focus on keeping black men in their place by not allowing us to take care of our families and protect the most precious part of which is, of us, which is our women and our children. Black women are now forced to be the primary decision makers in the family. Black men and women have to compete for jobs, housing, health care, education, and political positions, which only damage our relationships more. You know, one thing about it, the family still represents the basic and best learning institution. And in order to re reverse the curse of black family dysfunction, we must become partners. And we have to invest quality time and attention into our relationships at home because the home is the base of strength and personal growth and a springboard to success in life. You know, in order to protect the brand, you have to truly protect home. When you commit to a bigger vision than you, God will truly bless the blessing. Thank you. Good day, everyone. My name is Javon Curtis, representing Hood Paralegal. Well, we come to educate, empower, and entertain. I want to first give praise to a couple of black queens in my life. Jemaya, Anila, thank you for being my daughters. Ashley, thank you for being a great mother. And also, Denise, thank you for giving birth to me. I want to further elaborate on the topic of fatherhood and black family dysfunction, which we must correct, give publicity to, and make a household discussion. I want to start off by saying doing is demonstrating that you know. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Doing is demonstrating that you know which fathers need to exercise more of. Loyalty to dysfunction is poison to the black community. Us black fathers must practice what we preach and be more of a role model. We speak about education. We speak about success. And we speak about living righteous. But the leaders are missing in action. Black men must change the image of black men. Rebranding is the solution. We must approach this behavior with aggression, resilience, and accountability. Change happens when we abandon who we were and step into who we are going to be. We must change the narrative by taking what we want, strengthen morals, and eradicate stereotypes. In order to redefine the culture, we must embrace a new normal. Barriers must be broken. Barriers must be broken. All calls other than properly placed attorney calls may be monitored and recorded. The curse affect black family dysfunction. Dysfunction has a detrimental effect on the kids. We must be conscious of that. Dysfunction has a detrimental effect on the kids. Parental relationships are a shaded area that must be brought to light. By allowing shaded areas to be revealed, change becomes an option. So a solution to healing as a collective is therapy. Therapy should be seen as a positive. It may require us to step out of our comfort zone, but the reward outweighs the risk. We as black men must enter into our women's shoes in order to help them walk in another light. The black woman and black man together is a power system and also seen as a threat to society. Let's work, people. In closing, by having these discussions, the overall aim is to hopefully heal together, change history, and make, a per and make permanent memories. We must support, but also understand. I want to deeply express my gratitude to each and every one for tuning in and putting an ear to these issues that need addressing in the black community. We appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and gossip about us. If gossip is your thing. Make sure you tune in to our next episode, which is Female Empowerment Spotlight, where we pay homage to black queens making a difference. Our inaugural guest will be Queen J. Renee. Until next time, I'll leave you with this. Believing men and women are allies of one another. Let us explore places not familiar. Let us take back choices, discussions, power, life. Let's take back peace. Thank you.